Welcome to the NFL Imperialism Franchise, a seven-episode series premiering weekly, featuring three games per episode, equaling out to a 17-game season and hopefully a three- or four-game playoff run. The twist here is that the franchise will be played on this Imperialism map. I will be using one team throughout this series in hopes to have a good enough record to make the playoffs. Just like my normal Imperialism, player stealing and power-ups are both in play. However, the map itself works a little bit differently, which you will see how it works over time. After every game I play, I will roll for the the remaining 31 teams to see what their move is. Each week of the season, the map will be updated. There's a lot more to uncover, but we will get to it as soon as it comes up. To begin, we need to pick a team. So this is a pretty important step in this because I'm going to be remaining with this team for the entire series. I want a team that's kind of mid, to be honest. I don't want to be too good. I want to be able to build up a really solid team by stealing players. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll be playing as the Pittsburgh Steelers, the perfect example of mid in my opinion. We're also in a pretty good location as far as geography goes. I also think the Steelers is like the perfect name because at the end of the day, we're playing Imperialism. The whole objective is to steal land. I mean, come on, it's the American way. Matter of fact, this country is so good at stealing, we even stole the name Redskins and replaced it by the people who stole it. Unfortunately, due to my latest comments, I just got put on a watch list by the American government. So if this series does not finish, I am sorry, you have an excuse. But obviously, I want to show you guys what we're working with. Kenny Pickett is our starting quarterback, at least for now. Receiver number one is Deontay Johnson. Number two is the new pickup, Allen Robinson from the Rams. And obviously, you cannot forget George Pickens. Najee Harris holds this run game apart. TJ Watt, Cameron Hayward, and Mika Fitzpatrick might have permanent back damage for how bad they're going to have to carry me this series. So now I want to go ahead and place all the power-ups on the board, and these power-ups will stay on the board for the remainder of the series. We'll have eight power-ups in use for this series. Let's go ahead and spin it once. For our first one, it's going to be Poisoned, a power down actually, which will be going to the great state of West Virginia. Oh, that's not good. That's right underneath us. Oh, that's horrible. I feel like this is a good time to show your surroundings because you're gonna have to get used to this location. Obviously, right now we own half of Pennsylvania, share with the Eagles, tough team, and we're bordering the Bills, tough team, the Ravens, tough team, almost the Bengals, tough team, and the Browns, well, they can be tough on certain occasions. And now to make it even worse, we have the poison power down right under us in West Virginia. But besides that, we'll continue, we'll get maxed out. Going to Kentucky, and then we get Rewind. Rewind will be going to South Carolina, my home state. And and we continue with Bandit going to Maine, followed up by White Flag, a new power down. And the flag will be placed on the state of New Mexico. And then we're going to get Blitz, which is another new one. This one's a power up. Blitz will be going to South Dakota. Two more left will get redeployed. This will be going to Iowa. And our final power up is Double Trouble, going to the state of Oklahoma. So those are eight power ups placed on the map. Let me give you a quick refresher on what they do. Poisoned is the first one we place. This one's a power down. What it actually does is subtracts five overall from your top three players. Maxed out takes a player at random and converts them to a 99 overall. Rewind takes a legendary player in the past and adds them to their current roster. Bandit steals a player at random and he can also steal a power up at random as well. A new power down white flag, essentially it gives the team a free loss if a team matches up with them. Blitz is the complete opposite. If a team matches up with them, the team that has the power up wins automatically. Redeployed will switch spots with a random state or team. And finally, Double Trouble gets to steal two players instead of one for every successful win. Now it's time to get started with the Imperialism franchise, starting with our first spin as the usering of the Pittsburgh Steelers. And so we begin back with the iconic wheel spin. Here we go. Where? Are we starting our adventure? We're hitting our neighbors, the Eagles. I'm sure this is going to happen a lot. Eagles will be our first game here in this series. We open up the franchise with a tough matchup. It's against the Philadelphia Eagles. Let's see if this young man and this young core can handle them. Do note that every game is on the road for us because we are the ones on the conquest. I don't know why this was such a bad kick. We're going to be skipping over the defense on these games because just like Madden players, who really cares about the defense? We're going to open up with a Najee Harris run. It's going to be a first good pickup of about seven. But Dean, you can't run the same play over again. Well, actually, yes, I can. Thanks to my 48 million power and rise of kingdom unfortunately now I have to pass the football but here we have a good open route for george pickens our first connection will be third down in inches i attempt to pound the rock forward but what ends up happening is nicobe dean pounds me what obviously mike tomlin does not want me to go for this but he does not know that i'm that guy instead i end up fumbling however but jesus himself pat fryermuth recovers the football for me thank christ so now i can get back to my running ways with Najee harris i try to get the outside here but i only pick up about five yards it brings us to the end of the quarter so we're gonna swap fields i'm gonna take off and run here not gonna pass i think i have this one but i end up fumbling the ball the one yard line george pickens stands right next to the football and doesn't even think to pick it up this was very infuriating for me but as you can see 
see I am literally on the one yard short uh, before I fumble the football. I bring up instant replay just to make sure that I didn't make it. Sure enough, I did fumble the ball, but the worst part was obviously George Pickens standing there dumbfounded as it can be. He, he runs back to the sideline for whatever reason, just leaves the football there. That really made me mad. Obviously, the Eagles ended up scoring on that same drive, of course. It's right before halftime, so I want to get some points in the board. Looks like I would not be able to get a touchdown, but at the very least, I'm going to call a timeout with about three seconds left and want to kick a field goal. We'll do just that. Boswell up and good. It's going to be 7-3. to three. And obviously, the Eagles score again because why not? So it's 14-3. to three. I go for a really risky pass. It's incomplete. But thankfully, the refs were on my side here, as they're going to call a very rare roughing the passer. I lied, it's not really rare at all. I get the ball back, but now I have to deal with a 9.6 magnitude earthquake because the Eagles have some kind of whatever, I don't know. Najee Harris has a good run here. I could have taken it for a touchdown, but instead I run into the back of Fryermuth. It's a first down and 10 for the 42. Here's another good pass, kind of risky, but George Pickens makes up for that behemoth of a play he had earlier. Now a third down and eight, swap to the fourth quarter. I try to get it outside, I force a bad pass, ends up incomplete, and we're going to kick another field goal. So now it's going to be 6-14. to 14. At the very least, it's still a one-score game, but this is the Philadelphia Eagles. I would not expect them to score here. I lied, they are going to score here, 21-6. to 6. This puts me in a really weird position because now it's past the two-minute warning, and I'm going to have to score really quick and get an onside kick. It's a first down and 10 right now, but then I get it to a fourth down and one. And this is probably the stupidest play of my Madden career. I force a really bad slant pass here, and I give up the football to the Eagles. And at this point, this game's basically over. A very embarrassing week one performance for I, the Pittsburgh Steelers, as we will fall in Philadelphia 24-6. So following each week, I'm going to give you a short summary. Week 1 obviously kicked off with a depressing opening game for us Steelers, with the MVP of the Philadelphia Eagles defense being George Pickens. 22 teams played a game this week, with the remaining 10 taking an expansion. It wouldn't be an imperialism video without the Broncos and the Seahawks expanding, of course. Two power-ups were claimed, one being the Blitz power-up of the Vikings, so we'll get a free win for Week 2. The Colts traveled down south to Kentucky to claim the maxed-out power-up, which they will use on Michael Pittman Jr. to turn him into a 99 overall. It would certainly be a shame if this player was stolen the following week. Some notable player steals include Devontae Adams becoming a 49er, Derrick Henry becoming a Panther, Saquon Barkley joining the Bills, and obviously our glorious King TJ Watt departing ways with us to join the city of brotherly love. Followed by this recap, I will also update you on the weekly standings. This will also be shown at the end of each week. As you can see, a lot of tiebreakers going on for all their 1-0 teams. The Dolphins at top right now. Like I said, some teams don't play a game every week. It's going to be a little weird. Some teams only get an expansion. As you can see, some teams here have only expansions. 17 to 24 getting to the bottom of the pack now. Some teams teams of expansions, but now we're getting to some teams with losses. And here's the final page for week one standings as all these teams are 0-1. So maybe you know by now how this map works. I said it works a little bit differently. It's all about territory. A good example is this that the Chiefs beat the Bears, so they take a part of Illinois. For week two, we are moving to the left, and I think I know who that's hitting. That's going to clearly hit the top of Ohio, which means we have a date with the Cleveland Browns, and already I'm thinking something good. We already lost TJ Watt. We could get a pretty solid replacement on defense of Miles Garrett if we come out a win. Week 2 versus the Cleveland Browns. We're going to start week two on defense. Hope our defense can lock up Deshaun Watson. That is something 26 women will never be able to say. And fortunately, we do just that, so we're going to start with running the football. Another promising start. Maybe we'll get some points on the board this time. Third down and seven, I drop back for a pass, and I have no clue what happened here. Miles Garrett just walks up to me like I'm a grandma and steals my purse. I really cannot make sense of this. I have to pull up instant replay again because this is just laugh out loud stupid. Miles Garrett literally playing rugby just steals the football from me. Obviously, the Browns end up scoring on that play because why not? Third down and six for us. I'm going to hit up Patty on this and we're gonna get the first down and move the chains and the run game was going really strong I handed off the Najee Harris this is a tough run for the man it's gonna be a second down and eight to bring in the second quarter first down and goal already I hit off the Najee Harris again and finally rewarded with the first touchdown of the season what a start for Najee Harris tie game the Browns can outscore so I'm trying to get the passing game involved now hit up George Pickens hoping to make up for what he did last game first down and 10 I take a really bad sack it'll be second and 15 and at this point I think this drive is a fluke because I'm going to do a check down which is usually a sense to punt the football but I actually end up converting here and I also get a flag which ends up being rough in the passer I guess the refs love Kenny Pickett I end up taking this drive all the way down the 15 we're handing off the Najee Harris straight up the gut almost gets a second touchdown of the day but will be stopped short of the two but even better news I'm gonna hit George Pickens in the end zone here and then finally man he has his hands in the football in the end zone i can finally stop talking about the one play that should not be named touchdown george pickens and we take the lead 14 to 7 and guess what life is good we get the football right back hoping to get some more points for the half so i take off with kenny pickett myself 
I get out of bounds and pick up eight. Look for a pass, and this was the biggest gamble of the day. No clue how I converted this, but we're not going to ask those questions. And I end up just settling for the three points here. Just play it safe, and I make it 17 to 7 before halftime. Where we get the ball back, Najee Harris is back on the run game. I baby this dude. This dude tries to jump on me. I don't know what he's doing. And I get a first down at 10, best run of the day. Third down at 8, I go for passes. The best pass of the day for me for Allen Robinson, the new target. And once again, I have to settle for a field goal, but I'm going to make it 20 to 7. I guess TJ Watt was just a virus in the locker room because this defense is playing better for some reason but look at this run by Najee Harris as I'm gonna break daylight I will not make it but hey to the 38 yard line best run of the day and I end up getting another touchdown for Najee Harris I don't know how what a run what a day that's the second touchdown of the day and also 200 yards crazy I don't even need to show you these final six minutes Browns got a garbage time touchdown, but we were able to lock up Deshaun Watts and the Browns and get a huge win in Cleveland. Finished with 252 yards from Najee Harris and two touchdowns, 25 broken tackles and 118 yards after contact. Ended up winning 28-14. <laughs> So let's recap week two, and it all began with a Najee Harris Masterclass game with 200 rushing yards in the game and a pair of touchdowns to give the Steelers, us, the first win of the season. And obviously this win stole a player from the Browns. We're getting 99 overall superstar right in, Miles Garrett, to the franchise. Some other important wins include the Bears taking down the Colts to steal, well you guessed it, 99 overall Michael Pittman. The Bills complete the New York sweep taking down the Giants last week and now the Jets and they'll require Sauce Gardner and the Chargers win D-Hop out west from the Cardinals. Both power downs were claimed as the Cowboys will be forced to take an L in week 3 and the Bengals suffered an illness in the locker room from the Poison power down, subtracting 5 overalls to the 3 current best players. Joe Burrow, Joe Mixon, and T. Higgins. And on to week two standings, we have four teams at 2-0 and undefeated. The Dolphins stay at the top, and quite a bit of teams also at 1-0-1 with one win and one expansion. So far, we have three teams yet to play a game. They're just in expanding. Of course, it's the Broncos and Seahawks and also the Patriots. Quite a couple teams sitting at 1-1 right now, and a few teams are also sitting at one loss and one expansion. And as you can see, the Buccaneers, Titans, Raiders, and Texans are all 0-2. As well as the Lions, the reason why they only have one move on the board, they're only 0-1-0, is because other teams already played games around them and you can't play twice during one turn. So two weeks in, I think you get an idea how crazy this map's gonna look. Our area of land is completely clustered. The Falcons took away some beaches from Florida, so Jacksonville responded back and taken away their beaches. And the West Coast is getting a little crazy too. So it's time for week three. Where will we be going? We'll be going down. And from where this logo is placed, this is easily making contact with the Baltimore Ravens. Third game of the day, second division rival, Ravens versus Steelers. Let's go. Prime time in the lights in Baltimore, Maryland, as us, the Steelers, will take on Lamar Jackson and the Ravens. First things first, I don't expect to have such a dominant game on the ground, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm looking for the passing game. I hit Patty for a first down. Next up, I'm going to get the run game going, and it's going to go pretty good already. I don't know if I'll be able to repeat the success, but here's a solid run by Najee Harris. And a third down and three, going for another pass, another completion to Allen Robinson. A little bit of shifty work right there with the 25. Third down and six, I fake the handoff, give him some time. I run out of the pocket, find an open receiver. It's Robinson. I don't know how he brings this one in, but three Ravens cannot stop from getting the touchdown 7 nothing us we get the ball back after the Ravens score a touchdown I go play action here and I see the complete side of the right field no one's even there and I'm gonna get a 30 yard run with Kenny Pickett here no clue how that happened but I'm gonna hit the Dougie afterwards second down and 10 now I'm gonna fake the hand off the Najee Harris run out of the right again find the open space here to deliver to George Pickens first and goal from the three second and goal at the one yard line I know I got this with Najee Harris I lied, I do not, but I only have one option to do here, and I know exactly what it is. We already saw success with running the ball with Kenny Pickett. Let's do the one. It's a QB sneak, and it's a touchdown to make it 14-7. The Ravens will give us the best early Christmas present I could have asked for. They're going to put us at the 8-yard line after a horrible offensive drive, so I know exactly what to do. It's worked once. Let's do it twice. Kenny Pickett, take it himself. It's a quarterback draw touchdown, 21-7 now, with Kenny Pickett his second rushing touchdown of the day and he's going to hit the Yankee Doodle. And once again, we're just completely creaming the Ravens now. It's going to be 27 to 10 before halftime. Najee Harris in the reception touchdown now. I'm going to skip forward to the fourth quarter because it was kind of dull from there, but the Ravens didn't have coming back. But look at this highlight reel of a play. Not only do I hurdle that man, I stay in bounds, evade the tackles, and I showboat into the end zone with probably one of the greatest runs of my life in Madden, to be honest. I don't play this game enough, but look at this. Hurdle and break the tackle, stay in bounds with both feet, 
and that's another seven on the board for Najee Harris. Ravens ended up getting another touchdown to make it seven points, so at this point, just gotta get a first down, but instead, I'm just gonna take the risk and get the field goal to put this out of reach. It'd make it 39 to 29, and I got it through with Boswell. And essentially, this game was over. We ended up winning 39 to 29 on the road in Baltimore, and Najee Harris had another career day with 140 yards and one touchdown. <laughs> Week 3 started with an impressive performance by our Steelers. Kenny Pickett is starting to develop into his passing game. Alongside Najee Harris continues to light up the highlight reels. No power-ups were activated on the map, but we've had plenty of big changes when it comes to rosters. Micah Parsons to the Chargers, Jair Alexander to the Bears, TJ Watt to the Jets, Terry McLaurin to the Panthers, Jamar Chase joins back the Bengals after being stolen by the Browns, Buda Baker to the Broncos, Marshawn Lattimore to the Chiefs, Jonathan Taylor to the Lions, and most importantly, if you're wondering who I took, Mark Andrews is now the new TE number one in the Steel City. Now, I'm sure you guys will be saying, but Dean, Lamar Jackson. Yes, I know, but I feel like taking a quarterback is lame and it's unrewarding. So I'm sticking to my gut and sticking to my man, Kenny Pickett. Now back to the standings. The Niners are on top now and you can see the Panthers trail just behind them. They're the only 3-0 team so far. We have quite a couple teams that are undefeated. Seven in total. Includes the Chiefs, Dolphins, Bills, Vikings, and Broncos. An expansion is basically kind of like a tie. Consider it like half a win. And you can see we're on the second tab. We're ranked number 11 right now in a 2-1 record. And we have quite a few teams who are one win, one loss, and one expansion. That continues into our third tab where we have the Eagles, Cowboys, and Giants. But now we're starting to the teams who haven't even won a game yet. And you can see our final tab. Have no wins here and you're probably wondering why are the final three teams in placement black and white which is the Colts Titans and Texans well I'm about to bring up a new twist which I did not mention at the beginning of this video from here now forward every single episode at the end of the three weeks played there will be three teams eliminated so by the time we get to episode six that means we'll have 18 teams eliminated which leaves us with 14 teams and that's enough for a playoff so essentially what's going to happen is that they're obviously going to be knocked off the map and the land they had prior is going to be turned into an open territory so now you see three open territories left to be unclaimed what does this mean going to the next episode well these are three perfect spots to place a power up. From here now forward, every time a team gets knocked off the map at the end of the episode, their territory or their spot they owned will be replaced by a power up. So going to the start of episode two next week, we'll have three new power ups placed on those positions. So this is where I'm going to end you guys off at the end of episode one. Come back next week for episode two. It will follow the same pattern and I will see you guys then. <laughs>